that everybody can hear me. Um, if somebody can send me a little chat log and let me know that you can hear me okay, that'd be great. We were having some technical difficulties earlier. Just send in a Q&A and let me know that you can hear just fine. Awesome, cool, thank you very much. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Sorry for logging in a little bit late, we had some technology problems. But anyways, we wanna welcome you guys today to our um, online Q&A, and it is about paying U.S. Customs via ACH and periodic monthly statements. Um, my name is Kim Taylor, and I'm here with Allison Schroer and Tia Tenbrink, our experts in the area. Um, so this is an interactive webinar, and we have Q&A button. It's either on the top of your screen or bottom of your screen. You guys are welcome to submit questions anytime throughout. We also had a lot of questions submitted um, prior to the webinar, so um, we will be going through those. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about Scarborough, and then we will be on our way. So Scarborough is a full service domestic and international logistics provider and customs broker. We offer consulting for US, Mexico and Canadian trade compliance, supply chain optimization and duty drawback. And we also offer turnkey warehousing services from transloading and distribution to e-commerce fulfillment with facilities located across the nation. So I wanna turn this over to Allison and Tia and they will be your gurus today and uh, keep submitting those questions, I guess. Thank you guys very much. All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm glad you guys were able to join us. I guess we'll jump right in here on what is ACH? Um, you may have been hearing that term a lot more here lately um, from your brokers asking you to get on ACH, and we're gonna kind of let you know why it's important. So. ACH stands for Automated Clearinghouse. Um, we kind of, we, well, we don't kind of, we strongly feel that importers should sign up for their own ACH. Instead of writing a check to US Customs, ACH allows payment directly from your bank account. Also, you don't have to write a check for your duties to your broker. It's just automatically withdrawn. It's a quicker, much more seamless process and um, we really find that a lot of our importers that have switched um, are definitely seeing the benefits of, of making the change. So a statement is the means for triggering your ACH payment to customs. Um, the statement is provided to the importer by US Customs, generally comes directly from your broker's software and is emailed directly to you. And it shows a list of the entries released on the same date and breaks down the duties and fees that are owed to US Customs. So why is ACH important? Well, lots of different reasons. Uh, no more checks, as we kind of mentioned before. You can do an auto pay uh, with debit or credit to CBP. But on that note, we highly suggest debit. Um, so CBP does all the work when it comes to collecting the payment from your account. Uh, you don't have to initiate the payment. They take care of it for you. Um, we've had a couple of importers say they're not comfortable with making the switch to ACH. And so a solution um, to that is just opening a new bank account that's strictly for your customs duties and taxes to be withdrawn from. Um, we've never seen CBP pull more than they're supposed to, and um, it's it just, it's easy. It gets you instant credit terms with CBP, um, plus the option of periodic monthly statement, which we will go into in a little more depth here shortly. And it can definitely help your, um, the importer's cash flow. Another thing to keep in mind, um, applying for ACH may create the opportunity for an importer to receive better credit terms with their broker. Uh, before all the section tariffs were in place, Scarborough was outlaying about 1.5 million each month in duties on our importer's behalf. And now with the increase in, in the tariffs, we're seeing upwards of $8 million going out. So it's a lot of money. So 
So who should apply? Well, everyone should apply. <laughs> but uh, to be more specific, importers with high duty, moderate to high volume, um, importers that are in, in affected by the increased tariffs, or even uh, an importer who has FTC withdrawals. What about an importer that's only importing like five times a year and they have you know, lower value and lower duty? Should they still apply? They can certainly still apply. Okay. So how to apply, here's the fun part. It's really a, a pretty easy process. Um, if you are a Scarborough client, we can take care of this for you. Um, but just as general information, there is the form 400 ACH application, needs to be completed and sent to US Customs. Correct, yeah, the process is very simple. Um, a few quick tips though is that you need to make sure that the payer information that you're listing on the application matches with the 5106 information that's on file with customs. If you send it to the ACH team at customs and it doesn't match, they will reject your application. Also, you will need your uh, broker's assistance or the broker to complete the information in the broker fi filer information at the bottom of the form. Um, it relates to who the ABI client rep is, and that is uh, the person that a customs broker has a direct relationship with uh, somebody at customs that does more of like the programming and not the day-to-day -day entry related um, you know, things at customs. So you'll definitely want to get their assistance in filling out that bottom section of the form. And as I mentioned before, um, you know, if you're a Scarborough client, we can take care of this for you. We can basically fill out majority of the application, just leaving uh, the section for your banking information and your signature open for you to complete, and then you send it back to us. Send it into customs and then CBP will assign you a PUN or a payer unit number. Um, it is emailed back to the email address that's listed on the application. So you want to watch your email for that. Um, I think sometimes they get caught in spam filters or <laughs> quarantined, but definitely keep your eyes open for it. Uh, the importer must then forward their payer unit number to their customs broker so that they can get you all set up properly in their operating system. Once that's done and you're good to go, you're ready to start paying CBP via ACH. A couple of things to note here, your PUN or payer unit number is assigned to you as the importer, but it can be used by all of your brokers. And then the other thing to mention, which I know Tia's had to work with this frequently is do not lose your payer unit number. Uh, can be difficult to track that down. Right, so if you've been assigned a payer unit number in the past, but you no longer know what that number is, customs will only give that information to whoever they originally emailed that payer unit number on, even if it was five years ago. Now, you can call customs and they will work with you if you can prove basically that you work for the same company that the payer unit number was originally signed to. But it's not anything where your customs broker can call and get that information for you. You will have to contact them directly if um, it's already been assigned the first time. Um, and just one other note on the payer unit number, that's really the catalyst that makes everything in the ACH and PMS system work. And so, you know, the broker can't do anything further with getting you set up for being on your own ACH statement without that payer unit number. So it's critical to watch for that information to come back in your email and forward it on. Okay, we've got, we've had a couple questions come in. Um, on the CBP form 400, it says page 104 on here. What are the other pages? I believe it's just instructions. instructions. Yeah. The only thing that you have to submit is just the page one. Okay. 
Perfect. And then um, somebody's asking, is it possible to be set up for our ACH and PMS for individual importer of record suffix suffixes? For each individual suffix? Yes. And the reason why is because the payer unit number is directly associated with an IRS number. So if the IRS number has a suffix on it, then you would definitely want to, and you have, you know, let's say three suffixes that you import under, you would want a separate payer unit number assigned for all three of those. Perfect. So that does mean then three applications would have to be submitted. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and then that takes us into our next question really quick. How long does it take for the application to actually be processed with CBP? That's actually a really great question. Um, it probably goes anywhere from two weeks to six weeks. It honestly depends on whether customs is being inundated with requests. Um, you know, hopefully now that we've gone through, um, you know, we've had a full year now of the Section 301, which was a big, you know, push by many brokers to have their importers um, get set up with their own ICH. And so now that we're a year into this, I would say that customs should be less inundated with requests, but, you know, you can never count on that it's going to get processed in a couple weeks. So you should be planning that it takes six weeks and then if it takes two, then, you know, we're happy that it got processed faster. Awesome. All right. So our next question is, do you as an importer want periodic monthly statement? What is that? Okay. Periodic monthly statement. It provides the ability to make periodic duty payments on an interest free monthly basis. Um, it's still based off of your release date and the importer will continue to receive those daily statements um, as an ACH. However, you don't have to pay them until the monthly statement is processed. So preliminary statements, preliminary um, PMS statements print on the 11th workday of the following month and the finals print on the 15th workday. So for example, you can have an example in here. Shipments that release in May 2019 won't be paid until the June, June 2019 PMS statement. So you're always going to be paying your monthly statement the following month after it releases. So we've got some examples of what a daily statement looks like versus a periodic monthly statement. So up in the top corner there, you can see your statement number on your daily is that 4518-22504E. So this shows you your entry numbers, your estimated duty and taxes that we will be owed and your total amount. So then on the 11th workday of the following month, you will get your PMS statement. So this is gonna list every single one of your peri periodic daily statements. So you'll be able to see there below that same statement number with the same duty amount and uh, taxes down below. So you can tie them all back. So the main difference is that your daily statement gives you entry detail. So if you have multiple entries, they'll all be listed on that daily statement and then you'll have a total amount due for the daily statement. On the periodic monthly statement, it's basically only lists the statement number and the total amount due, amount that was due for that daily statement that printed, you know, two to four weeks ago. So one is very detailed and the other is just literally a statement number and an amount. Okay, so the benefits. One of the big benefits that we see um, based on when your shipment releases, you can be looking at credit terms of up to six weeks with US Customs. Uh, the PMS consolidates all of your duty payments for one month onto you know, basically one payment versus ACH where the payment is pulled from your account every single time you have a daily statement. 
Um, they are consolidated by port and IRS number. Um, so another thing to keep in mind when you are paying your PMS, you may still have multiple PMS statements. So it's not gonna be one lump sum coming out of your account. It's going to be each one of those PMS statements. Um, payment to CBP is due the following month versus a 10 day window. And then again, your broker may be more apt to give you credit terms or better credit terms if they are not floating the duties on your behalf. And then lastly on this, if, if Scarborough is your assigned customs broker, we can assist in reporting, uh, giving you good data to help you decipher what you're going to be paying U.S. Customs every month. It's something we do for several of our clients, and we would absolutely be willing to help out with anyone else who needs that service. So that brings me to um, our next question that just came in. Um, we've got somebody out there that's wondering how the statements are delivered. Are they delivered to the importer? Are they delivered to the broker? How can they go get those statements? So the statements come through the customs broker software. And so the customs broker gets them and then the importer gets them as well. So for Scarborough, how our process works is uh, obviously our accounting department gets the statements and then it's automatically emailed out of our software system to the importer. So what if, what if a client um, missed that statement or the, it got lost in the system? Is there a way to go pull that data? Yes, there is. They can just contact us and we'd be happy to pull it from our system and send it over to them. Mm -hmm. So it's it's very retrievable. And also in ACE, we can look that up in ACE, which we will get to that in a moment too. Perfect. Okay, so paying U.S. Customs via PMS allows importers to extend payment terms of duty and taxes up to six weeks, depending on your release date. So we kind of have an example here. If your shipment released on May 6th, it will print on prelim PMS statement on June 16th. Your final statement prints on June 21st, which is when it'll be paid. So we're talking 45 calendar days of, of float time. If you were to just pay regular ACH, not on PMS, that payment would have been due on May 17th. So there's a big difference there. Um, I have another question that came in. I think this is related to the debit or credit options. They were wondering, is it a requirement to have the amount um, pulled out directly from our bank account because they would like to work on their own AP schedule and schedule D? No, Customs has a set time when the periodic monthly payments are due. Yes, we have to follow Customs schedule. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, and then on the other side of, of things, if the shipment released on May 30th, uh, your prelim payment would still print on June 16th following customs schedule, and your final payment would be due, due June 21st. So, you don't get quite as much time in this scenario. So, there'll be some, some shipments you'll get quite a bit of time, and other shipments, you know, the window kind of tightens as you get closer to the end of the month. But the PMS comes out the month following release on the same date, regardless when the release occurred. So here we have our PMS um, schedule. Customs establishes this at the beginning of each year. Sometimes it's a couple weeks into January before we see it. Um, but it's available on CBP's website, or we can send you a copy. Right, um, but the bottom line is that uh, the preliminary, preliminary statements will always print out the 11th workday of every month. So even if Customs hasn't provided this exact date schedule, you can always count on that it will always be printed on the 11th workday, and then the, the finals come out on the 15th workday of every month. So that's definitely something where you can already go out and start looking at you know, 2020 and looking and planning on when that money would be coming out. And we had a couple of questions come in. Um, yes, you will be receiving this recording as long as you regist registered for this webinar, you'll get the recording. 
And along with the recording and the presentation, um, I will send the link for the next year's periodic, periodic monthly statement schedule from US Customs and the link of where to go find that if it's not out yet. So you will get that information. Okay. How else can we get that information? How else can we get that information? So we can go to ACE. If you have an ACE account, uh, there are reports and we basically did just kind of a step-by-step -step guide here on how to access those reports. So I won't read through every single one of those, uh, but it's, it's pretty easy to access. And I've got here some screenshots. So this is just a quick screenshot of that area in ACE in the reports module. There you can see on the left, um, those are the reports that are available uh, with your statement information. And then there are, um, you, you select your report and then there's multiple ways to search depending on what kind of data you are looking for. And this is something that we can also assist, um, walk you through this if you need, you know, assistance on this, we can walk you through your ACE portal and how to, how to access this as well. Um, and just a note on that, you do not have to have an ACE account to pay your duties by ACH or by PMS. Um, we highly encourage everyone signing up for an ACE account, but it's not required. Um, there are other benefits to having your own ACE account. You have the ability to look at your entry information, other communication from customs. So there are multiple benefits to having an ACE account, but you don't have to have one if you still want to participate um, with having your own ACH or uh, PMS. Okay. So we're back to the Q and A. Um, we do still have a question um, in regards to um, the credit and debit situation. So um, the question is, you know, we understand that they may have a set schedule when they pull the money and we can get those dates, but we'd rather have the payments be sent by us. Then you would apply for credit rather than debit. Um, doing credit allows you to initiate the payment. I, you can apply for credit. We will say just from our own experience that the process is a little bit more cumbersome um, in the sense that your broker will not be able to give you as much assistance in making sure that the payments are processed in the correct time frame if you choose credit. Okay, we have another question that came in. Can a foreign importer of record get ACH set up? Um, they can, but the key is, is that they have to have, um, their current bank has to have a U.S. branch, and the ACH team at Customs wants to know the U.S. address and the U.S. bank routing number. So it's not enough for you to complete or list that name on the application. You actually have to provide the address and the U.S. bank routing number. Um, also, they request a U.S. telephone number for um, that bank. They also, and this is just in general, not just foreign, but um, anybody that's applying for ACH, your bank must be a National Automated Clearinghouse Association participant. And if they are not, then you are not eligible to do ACH, at least through that bank. Thank you, Tia. We've got another question in here, and this is back to the periodic monthly statement. There is a fee on the sample PMS. What is that fee? The fee column on there is going to be your NPF and HMF. So it's broken out separately from the estimated duty. Right, or if you have a cotton fee, mm -hmm. anything that is not actual duty uh, will go into that fees column. So when you are planning and, and looking to see how much you're going to um, be paying or how much is gonna be coming out of your account, you need to add up all of those columns together, whether it's the duties column the taxes column or the fees column. All three of those need to be added up 
uh, in order to know how much will be coming out of your account for that entry. Okay, we've got a couple more questions in here. Why is ACH beneficial to FTZ withdrawals? I mean, you're still paying duties. So when you do your withdrawals, you should, you know, if you can float that for another up to six weeks, why not? Because the assumption is if you're doing FTZ, that you're having it go into that zone for a reason, and that's because you don't want to pay out the duty money until your product is either needed or ready to, to be out into the commerce. And so, kind of just like with Allison's point, why would you want to pay your duties any earlier than you have to, especially if you are, you know, that's the reason why you have put it into the zone in the first place. So you'd have, if you do four withdrawals in a month, you would see those on the next month's PMS altogether. Okay, I think that we, we don't have any other questions. This might be a day where we actually get done early. Um, we'll probably leave this out for another 30 seconds or so if anybody wants to send in a question. Um, but other than that, I really appreciate you guys explaining ACH and PMS, I know that it's a cumbersome, well, what seems to be a cumbersome process, but in the end, it's actually a very helpful process for importers. So anyway, I appreciate you guys. We don't have any other questions coming in. So thank you very much.